The Middlesex County Office of Health Services has made radiation emergency preparedness a priority since 2008. By exercising with and providing education programs for first responders, volunteer groups, and the public, we've built strong partnerships within our community that are critical for radiation emergency response. My name is John Dowd. And I'm Rich Kozub. And together we have over 60 years of local public health emergency experience here at Middlesex County Office of Health Services. In 2008, our county developed an emergency response plan for a radiological dispersal device. After the plan was put into place, we designed and provided training for county staff and volunteers. We first met the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's Radiation Emergency Preparedness Team at a Medical Reserve Corps conference in Dallas, Texas in 2011 when Dr. Ansari and others from CDC presented the Community Reception Center, or CRC, concept to everyone. The big question that came up at the conference was, is this the role of public health? While we had been working on the idea of radiation monitoring, it was after we spoke with the CDC about the CRC concept and how one would flow that we found a template for moving forward. In particular, concepts taken from CDC's Population Monitoring and Radiation Emergencies Guide assisted us in the development of our response plans and procedures. It was after that conference that we had to answer a critical question. Who's responsible for CRCs in our community? We knew we'd have to be ready to set up CRCs during a radiation emergency, and because of its location, size, and scale of Middlesex County, we knew training and partnerships were an essential part of that plan. We decided to plan a regional CRC functional exercise, and that meant additional training and continuing to grow our relationships within the radiation preparedness community. Our training ramped up in 2009 after we received funding from the Urban Area Security Initiative of Northern New Jersey to purchase equipment for the program. During that time, our county sent nearly 100 individuals to classes at the Department of Energy's Counterterrorism Operations Support Center in Nevada. From there, we applied that training through a number of tabletop and functional exercises with other local, state, and federal preparedness agencies. Prior to Gotham Shield 2017, our office had participated in over six radiation training exercises. That participation was critical for us to see how our plans and procedures played out in a simulated event, and to clarify other agencies' responsibilities and capabilities and how we would work together. Partnerships have been as essential as training throughout all of this. After each exercise, we grew our partner network and included them in future exercise plans. Working with other agencies on development has never really stopped. I'm on the phone with different federal agencies almost every other day, and that just continues year after year. Answering questions like, how do our roles fit together? How can we support others? And who's supporting us? When we participated in the Gotham Shield exercise, all the partnerships and individuals we met over the years came full circle. We had over 70 different agencies participate in the CRC portion of the exercise, from federal all the way down to local. Gotham Shield provided us the opportunity to include additional agencies in the exercise process. This reinforced to us the volume of staff and volunteers needed to manage an event of this scale. It also provided us the opportunity to develop just-in-time training materials and job aids to support staff at the CRC stations. The experience provided lessons learned in many areas, improving triage, teaming health physicists with mental health professionals, and the need for message coordination between New Jersey and New York. Like every exercise, Gotham Shield helped us to further enhance our partnerships and overall preparedness. And with the support of our freeholders, the county legislators, we are using that momentum in constructive ways. Going forward, we are working specifically with our local hospitals, access and functional needs groups, mental health specialists, and health physicists. Our goal is to ensure that all staff are trained for their role in a radiation emergency and to ensure we can do our part to help hospitals maintain a manageable patient volume. Part of that effort means paying close attention to and ensuring we can support individuals with access and functional needs and integrating our county animal response team to help manage individuals who arrive at CRCs with service animals or pets. The CDC has always been one of the top sources to access fact sheets and PowerPoint slides for our trainings on radiation emergencies. 
In fact, we've incorporated many of their online training modules into our awareness level training for our staff and volunteers. Another excellent resource is the CDC's CRC Toolkit. The toolkit provides relevant resources that enable planners to create an entire exercise. We've also used an adapted CDC's CRC flowchart to increase the volume of people that we can help in an event. We modified it to integrate basic registration steps into our waiting lines, and the CDC was interested in how those changes would impact participant throughput times, how long it takes a person to go through the stages of the CRC process. Testing throughput times at exercises is a great way to measure and build models for predicting how a CRC should scale to accommodate the large number of people we'd expect in a radiation emergency. Using this data, CDC can build electronic tools that help others optimize their CRC operations. The CDC found that our modified flowchart did make things go faster for people who didn't have to go through a full dose assessment. Since we also used actors in our exercise, we were able to begin to measure the timing impact of concerned individuals who may need more time to talk with radiation and mental health professionals. Over time, we've expanded who we work with at CDC to include the Inorganic and Radiation Analytical Toxicology Branch for dose assessment and sample processing questions, and also the Office for Public Health Preparedness and Response for planning and policy topics. I am most impressed with how our offices all work together, especially the Office of Health Services. You need to have county offices, the state, the federal government, and our municipal partners working and preparing together so that we maintain the highest level of effectiveness possible. At all times, you need a dedicated and hardworking staff who have put in a lot of hours to get to where we are today. And I am so proud that we have that here in Middlesex County. To us, success is built on the team that comes together to do all this. County personnel, volunteers, and our public health partners. After a big exercise like Gotham Shield, I see our impact when people who don't have any radiation training come in and say, wow, this exercise was great. Thank you so much. They have seen what radiation emergency response requires. They've applied their skills, and they are better prepared to perform their role within the overall team.